Water Quality Concerns in Agriculture. This is Harold Waters, Field Specialist for Agronomic Systems, and I want to speak with you uh, today about the water quality concerns and the involvement with agriculture. So hypoxia. Hypoxia is due to excessive plant growth, and this is where plant matter dies during and after blooms, and the blooms are due to excessive amounts of uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, other uh, nutrients, and as a result, we get a very large growth of uh, plant life. And then as that plant material dies, we get a low dissolved oxygen and from the breakdown of that material, and then that leads to very low concentrations of oxygen, perhaps less than two to three parts per million. When that happens, uh, we create a dead zone where fish can't live. It's a very nice habitat for plant growth, but not so good for fish. And as a result, we call it a dead zone because you cannot catch any fish there. This has become a problem in the Gulf of Mexico. That's caused by uh, excessive amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus. In Lake Erie Central Basin, that's caused by phosphorus, we believe, and nitrogen as well. And in many other places around the country and around the world. Toxic harmful algal blooms, so these are toxic harmful algal blooms, so HABs, we tend to abbreviate these HABs, and these are created in uh, here in Ohio by cyanobacteria, that's a blue-green algae actually, uh, but actually I should say cyanobacteria is a bacteria, but we tend to call it a blue-green algae, and microcystis is the, the main species of concern for us here in Ohio. The microcystin, which is produced by microcystis species, is a liver toxin. And it's driven by uh, phosphorus, tends to be the driver for that in fresh water. And nitrogen is also involved. You have to have adequate levels of nitrogen, too, for the growth. And it was a problem, certainly, in 2015 for the wake, West, Western Lake Erie Basin, Basin and many other years in the past as well for Lake Erie. It's also a problem in Grand Lake St. Mary's. Ohio River, and many other smaller lakes around the state. And in the picture here, we show uh, microcystis. That's the green plant material there you see at Stone Lab, a uh, picture taken here by Jeff Reuter in uh, September 2013. So microcystin and public health, uh, the big, uh, I guess, news for Ohio at least was the do not drink order in the city of Toledo and posted on August 2nd, 2014 when microcystin levels went above the World Health Organization level of concern of one part per billion. Affected 400 to 500,000 people for a period of two to three days, and since then has increased the cost of water treatment for the city of Toledo. And if you wish, you can go online and look at other uh, microcystin advisories uh, posted by the Ohio EPA at their website there listed. And then microcystin is not just a Lake Erie problem, although we tend to think about what happens up there just because it's so visible. But microcystin, as the map shows here, can be found throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, any place that's not blue uh, has some detectable levels of microcystin in, in their, in their uh, samples. And so particularly where we get up to the red levels there, that is where we are at fairly high levels, and those are the places where we tend to hear about in the news. And you see Grand Lake St. Mary's on the western side of the state, Kaiser Lake there, West Central Ohio, down near Cincinnati and southern part of the state, and then certainly up by Lake Erie in the north central part. But you can see we have some red dots around other areas of the state. And again, if it's green, yellow, orange, or red, all those are detectable levels of microcystin. And you see that we have those pretty much across the state of Ohio. And then, of course, the harmful algal event, harmful algal bloom event on the Ohio River this past fall kind of woke us up to what happens in southern Ohio too, not just northern part of the state. But there was a 670 mile long uh, path, I guess if you will, of uh, harmful algal bloom on the Ohio River this past fall. And you can see it here, stretched almost from the city of Pittsburgh, clear down to Evansville, Indiana. And contributions, of course, came from not just Ohio, but also Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Kentucky, even Indiana uh, to contribute to that. And then nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen also can be um, a concern, a health concern as well, and as well as uh, driving some of that excessive algae growth. So nitrates, high late nitrate levels can uh, lead to blue baby syndrome, and that's where we have uh, reduced uh, transport of oxygen in the bloodstream if we have concentrations above 10 uh, milligrams per liter. And that does uh, set the uh, concentration concern for uh, health reports. 
And then ammonia also uh, can directly cause fish kills, and that would also come from agricultural runoff potentially, uh, whether it be manure or uh, from um, granular fertilizer.